Play that shit. What's going on, y'all? The NCC3 here, bringing you a sneak peek of the Wanders. But before we get into that, guys, two quick side notes here. Side note number one, we're about one week behind the Taiwan server in terms of gem shop purchases, events, updates, all that good stuff. Take a peek here. Happy Mother's Day is going to come up next. I'm going to buy into it. That's besides the point. Look at those rewards, man. Oh, that's disgusting. But anyways, right? Side note number two, let's take a peek here. The base, okay, the, the base of the Wanders or the base of your kingdom is locked still, as you can see here. But, you know, have no fear, Danger Dog's here. That doesn't mean the forts are, are locked. So, they're currently under protection phase right now on the Taiwan server. But let's read a little bit about them, shall we? Ooh, that's a cool bonus right there, isn't it? Um, okay, so about forts. Wanders consist of two types, bases and forts. In each kingdom, there is one base and six forts. Forts grant Wanders stat boost to the guilds that own them. Now... It does not say anything about the bases giving a stat boost. So um, I'm thinking maybe the base itself has something to do with like governing. I really don't know, guys. It doesn't give you too much information about the base itself. But the protection phase, that's what we're in right now. During this time, forts can't be seized. Guilds that own forts will receive wander stat boost. Battle phase. During this time, guilds will be able to seize forts. The guilds that occupy a fort for four consecutive hours will become its owner. Now, check this out, guys. Your guild can have all six forts. You just have to be strategic about it. So, if your guild, if your guild dominates, dominates your kingdom right now, it is your lucky day. Because all you need to do is leave a like on the video. No, I'm kidding, guys. Um, all you need to do is just kind of play hooky, you know. Attack just enough to take over the fort, and then you can pull your forces back to reinforce. So on and so forth, guys. But just, let's just keep reading, right? After 120 hours from the first fort's protective phase, all forts will enter battle phase, okay? Then the wander stat boost, guys. Guild members will receive the relevant wander stat boost from the fort's own. That means if your guild owns the fort, your entire guild gets the stat boost. Absolutely amazing. Here are the current um, stats that these wanders are going to give your uh, your base here, your, uh, your guild members, I mean. Tempest Fort, infantry attack boost 25%. That is going to be the absolute um, best one to get because if you guys, um, the combat system, the way it works, and I'll do a video about it, is that uh, infantry uh, goes in first, okay? Then your cavalry, then your range, then your siege, okay? In that exact order for both people. Now, Everybody does damage at the same time, so there's no nobody who has more uh, more of a damage bonus than the other. But you're going to lose your infantry before you lose any other unit, most likely, in this battle. Sometimes you might lose a cav unit here and there, but most likely you're going to lose all your infantry before you lose anything else. So the Tempest Fort for the infantry attack boost and the Sky Fort are the best ones to get, guys, because a lot of people are training this now where they have um, essentially nothing but an all-infantry uh, uh, offense. And it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad uh, It's not a bad way to go, guys. It's really not. Uh, just because of the way the combat system works. Going all-infantry and all-ranged is actually really not that bad. It's really not. But anyways, um, so here we go. Uh, cavalry attack boost 25%. Range attack boost 25%. And then they're going to give 20% defense and health to all your other units as well, okay? Siege is not included. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, that's besides the point, guys. On, on, a, on a side note here... Take a look here. There's the Tempest Fort. They're all surrounding. Okay, they they kind of make like a uh, like a diamond shape. You know, like a like a princess cut. I think is what it's called. Maybe not. I don't really know, guys. But it, it makes a certain formation. But let's look at a uh, different uh, kingdom here. Kingdom number one. Shout out to kingdom number one. They got over two billion might in a guild. Fuck you, KT. You guys, I'm telling you guys, hash crab saltiness, man. These guys will do anything, anything, anything to stay on top of anything that they can. But unfortunately, they got their ass kicked on the Taiwan server, so they moved to the American server. And they're still getting their asses kicked, and they're asking for everybody for help. But I know I'm getting off topic, guys. They're asking all the other guilds for help to try to be a number one. And, well, it's not going too well for them still. But let's take a peek here. Let's take a, let's go to the Tempest Fort here. Now, see this guild right there? Uh, 520 is the guild owner, TW1. So this guild right here owns this fort. Their entire guild is going to get that bonus right there. There's one fort. So Tempest Fort and Sky Fort are the two ones that people are going to want to own the most. Okay? This one right here, it's funny that the D1 guild 
owns this. That's that's crazy, right? And they get a four-day protection. That's amazing, guys. Four four-day, five-day protection. That's great. And now let's look at the other ones right here, right? Lunar Fort. Hey, 520 owns this one. That's what I mean, guys. You can own multiple gear, uh, multiple forts with your guild, but the base itself is still not available to be taken, guys. So, um, quick strategies I can see happening here is people are going to go like this. They're going to say, okay. Go to the Tempest Fort. You have to take the you have to take the Tempest Fort first. They're gonna plant all their big heaviest hitters here. They're gonna send their troops in. They're gonna occupy this base right here. Now, I don't know if you get bonuses for your troops. Like if they, it basically if they reinforce. Like let's say your your castle is right here. I don't know if people are going to shove troops into your castle to reinforce you. Then you send yours in. I don't know how the combat actually works, guys. That's why this is a sneak peek. But I have, some, I have a funny feeling that you're supposed to just occupy it. Like right here, if I click on this tile, I can actually occupy it. Send the forces in. They occupy it. And I think that that's basically the, the way it's going to go down. So uh, that, that's my two cents on the whole thing. And again, if your guild holds the fort for four consecutive hours, you're going to own that fort, and it's going to go under a lock and shell, basically, okay? Um, so, yeah, I think the Tempest Fort and the Sky Fort are going to be uh, the two most important forts out of them all. And then, um, where is it now? The Cavalry is going to be the next, maybe. But the ranged attack is actually really good, too. Like I said, guys, the troop composition... Really popular, all infantry, or another popular one is infantry plus ranged, and that's it. I would go two types if I was you guys. For me, I, I'm doing mostly ca uh, mostly cavalry. I do a three cavalry to every one other type of troop I've got. And so that's for every one infantry, I've got three cavalry. For every one ranged, i got three cavalry. So um, that's on my American server, guys, uh, my American server account. And that's the troop makeup that I use. But, um, yeah, guys, hopefully you guys like this sneak peek. Uh, if you guys have any questions, okay, the video is very self-explanatory. See, the, Notice how it has a protection period of 11 hours, 33 minutes. I believe that goes for all of them, okay, 11 hours, 33 minutes. And this one says 11 hours, 33 minutes, but we go to the other kingdom. They are kingdom number two. Let's just take a peek at this one really quick here. Tempest Fort. Oh, okay, so... Four, hour, four days, 15 hours, that's the protection that it has. Um, so the other kingdom has, oh, let's take a peek. Oh, I know, guys, you're probably like, no, hurry up. And so I'm trying to, okay, so they're on, they're on the same schedule, guys. Maybe Kingdom 3 was just late to get these forts. Uh, long story short, though, guys, uh, hey, Victor goes to the people who spend the most, and that is no joke. The people who spend the most are going to be the ones to occupy the fort, unfortunately, guys. Um, so if you're in a free-to-play guild, unfortunately, um, this probably discounts or probably negates your ability to own a fort unless you're on one of the newer kingdoms where there's nothing but free-to-play players. Like on the American server, there's like 15 or so peop uh, kingdoms. And so if you're, in one of the, if you're in the last kingdom and your guild just happened to move there all of a sudden and they're huge spenders, well, now all of a sudden your guild is the biggest guild on the, on the kingdom, and now you guys are just going to basically own that. I think the bases, on the other hand, my theory about the whole thing is the base is going to allow you guys to do kingdom versus kingdom. Now, there's going to be this big, huge, like, thing. Your guild's going to get a big bonus, yada, yada, yada. And again, the victor goes to the ones who spend the most. So, currently on the American servers, I think Medici holds the record at 300 and something million might. So shout out to him. Um, you know, I know he's going to be a really hard target to take down. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Anyways, guys, love peace and chicken grease. Be safe. But above all, stay classy.